continue with a, a not so long lecture on knowledge analysis. And again, at the end of the lecture, I will suggest you do some more work based on what you did so far. And let me tell you, um, so far we identified a lot of relevant knowledge in the task domain. So knowledge that is used by the different people working in the coffee shop and knowledge that is needed for the customers. And, and hopefully the knowledge for the customers is very clear by, by well, written, on, written on, on, on documents or written in, in the shop window. Um, so we, we know a lot about knowledge, now we are going to find a little bit uh, extra information. So these are actually requirements for redesign, because tomorrow we are really going to kind of redesign the situation, come up with a proposal to maybe improve things. And we will call this task model two. So far, we have been working on task model one, a model of an existing situation, right? And there were a couple of things that you still need to model, but most of it is now completely known, and it's nicely put in a model and in pictures, so this really helps. So now we are going to, uh, to be inspired by, well, the current task model, and especially issues. Um, we are also going to find out about requirements of the client, maybe so that, let me say the manager of the shop, but also ideas from any stakeholder or from the current agent. So people say this could be better. And then we are also co going to consider competitor analysis. You, you understand what a competitor means? A competitor could be another coffee shop. And actually, if you walk to the coffee shop from here, you will pass about four or five other coffee shops. And these coffee shops have kind of the same business. So it's always wise to look in the other coffee shops, just for two minutes. Maybe one of you could go to a coffee shop and find out. So I'm going to cover these for four things. So first let me do task model one, issues from the model. So what did we find so far? We did interviews, uh, we tried to interpret what was going on using hermeneutics, we analyzed the documents, and we did a little bit of ethnography by hanging around in the coffee shop, right? So you could say, this one we covered. And then we did some modeling, and, um, and we analyzed the model and the relations. So maybe we, we should continue a little bit with modeling, a couple of things we still need to put in the model, and we should maybe continue a little bit with Analyzing, analyzing, analysis of the model and, and of the relations between things. But I think you did a good job, in fact. Um, if you did this and if you analyze, you might find out are there tasks without a role relation? Uh, so are there tasks for which you didn't identify a role so far? And actually, in talking to you when you gave your presentation, I think we identified some tasks for which you should still specify who has the role to do this. Uh, but, but, but maybe we found all. I think you made some notes about things, but there's not too much here. So maybe we did a lot. Uh, roles without agents or roles for which it's not clear who is delegated or mandated to perform the task. Maybe delegated by the boss, by the manager. Um, think about it. I think you got most of it. and. and two or three that I identified, I triggered a little bit, so say, who is performing this role? So make sure you get it all. A and then, are there protocols or strategies that are not communicated? I think we identified most of it being communicated sometimes only by, by talking to each other by, uh, through the mobile phone, that's fine. But, but, but make sure that nothing is left, so there should not be any strategies or any rules that, that are not properly communicated because then we have a problem. I think most of this is taken care of by now. Um, object without a task. Well, if there are objects that are not in any way related to a task, you can discard them. Right? If the object is not used by anybody, you can discard them. But for instance, the clip, if there would not be a task for emptying the clip and doing something, then the clip doesn't make sense, and if the clip doesn't make sense, then the cash machine doesn't make sense, the printing of the of the of the the, 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 the receipts doesn't make sense. So the clip should have a task and we discussed it, we identified it, so you should model that one. Because otherwise the whole system would fall down and there would be no trace of, of the business processes. Okay, 
So I think it's clear a couple of things you still need to do, but not too much. I put it in on, on my sheet before we had this meeting, so I just didn't know. But but most of this is taken care of. Okay? Yeah. So objects that change but not well specified, I think we, we identified all of this now. Right? So just have a look. I think there's not too much that you should still do. Yeah? Uh, events without triggering tasks. Um, I think we identified the events and we actually found a new event because we found the triggering of the object, right? We found the, 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 the fire extinction machine and identified, oops, there could be an event which is fire and something is already there, right? Fine? Good. Um, context environment issue not considered for objects or tasks or roles. Um, I think we identified, I told you, please make a, a, a map of the, of the environment, a map of, of the, the shop, and make sure that nothing at the map shows us that something is not properly modeled, right? So you need not, don't need to model any trash can, but, but, but if you find out in drawing the map that there's something important, then you should adjust your model. I think you're doing fine at the moment, but in general, these are all things that you should take care of, all of these. So check them, and if all of this is taken care of, then your task model one is full. Okay, requirements from the client of design. So the client, let me say, the manager might have some ideas, some requirements to improve the shop, to improve the business, to improve advertising to the customers. Uh, maybe the client already told you this. Uh, and maybe you could still, once again, ask them. Um, well, how to do this? You, you could actually have some tools. So for one thing is you could develop a persona for the main actors. Genji just told me we use persona. So I guess you know what personas mean, right? It's known to you. This is an example of my students in Italy were designing a completely different thing. My students in Italy were designing for a tourist office. And for the tourist office, they did a lot of personas, and these are examples of personas of tourists. So there are different types of tourists. There are some young guys, they are from Valencia, and they study, and they go to concerts, and, to, and they like to play in a rock band. And, and, and this is a completely different couple. They are 65 and 60 years old, come from Germany, and they would like to, uh, to, to, um, to, to travel around Europe. So this is a different type of persona. You can see sometimes the persona is not a single person, but could be a couple. Like a couple that enters the coffee shop, for instance, right? And, and maybe if the couple enters the coffee shop, like Ellie and me do every day, then one of us takes places the order and one of, one of us pays, right? So we, we are a single persona. So we, you could model us like this, right? So personas, it makes a lot of sense to model personas for the coffee shop, for the customers, but also for the barista, and also for the, the cashier and, and maybe for the manager, right? But personas are known to you, I guess, right? Because Chen Ji suggests yeah, that yeah. this is a common term. Okay, makes sense, good. Storyboard. Now, this is a storyboard, again, designed by, by my students, and this is for a hotel. And this storyboard is about the receptionist. So this is about how the receptionist behaves when a customer, or in a way a couple, enters the, the hotel and then the receptionist does a lot of things and it's described here and uh, well, have a look at it, the, the PowerPoint will be on the website uh, very soon. Um, actually I already uploaded it so uh, maybe Therese already put it there. <coughs> um, but, but storyboards again are known to you, right? Yeah. So a storyboard for, um, for the business processes, like in this case for the receptionist, but in your case, maybe for the cashier or for the barista, makes a lot of sense to find out what they have to do step by step, right? Okay. Now, the third thing that would, might help is a role script. And, and a role script could be a description of the role in an ideal situation, right? So you could do a role script in order to redesign. Now, you remember, hopefully, I'm not sure you were there, but, but at the first day I told you the story about me going to the Algero airport and trying to get a bus and to buy a bus ticket, yeah? Now, this story is completely true. 
because this is the situation, El well, this was the situation this spring in Alghero still. But my students in Alghero, my Italia Italian students redesigned the system. The system is not implemented, but this is the road script for the students after their redesign would be uh, implemented. So it says, I arrive at the airport and the first thing I do is look for a bus station because taxi is too expensive. I follow the indications and arrive at the bus stop. Here I find the maps and the ticket machine. There is not yet a ticket machine, but my students designed a ticket machine just by, by using the, their computer. Um, I search on the map where is my hotel and what bus line I must take. My hotel is the Catalunya Hotel at Via Catalunya number one. To arrive, I must take the rest bus that arrives near my hotel. So, at the new bus stops that my students designed, there is a proper map and you can buy a ticket. So my students designed a new ticket machine. And the ticket machine says an interface and, and it has lots of information. So I buy a ticket at the ticket machine. The ticket machine is easy to understand. And it says, well, in Italian this time, it's more Italian students, sorry for that. So it says, choose your language, and then I can use different types of languages, right? Okay, so then I can choose the type of ticket. It speaks Italian to you, but well, you can understand that it says, um, select your ticket. Select Joni Il Vieta. This is Italian, but it means select your ticket. But well, because my students are working in Italy, we communicate these types of things in Italian. Sorry for that, right? Uh, and, and then it says, um, select show the la quantita, so select the number. And he said, I, I choose one ticket. And then it says, uh, put money in the machine. So I insert three euros, which is the price for the bus ticket. And then it says th th that, um, oh, this is wrong. Uh, there should be a different one. It should now say something like, uh, wait for the ticket to be printed. Um, here and, and then it says um, um, wait for the ticket and take it and then when the bus arrives I check in my ticket and wait for the bus stop just before my bus stop I push the red button so you can see this is the role script for the new situation and, and if you decide to consider changing something you could make a role script for a machine that does not exist because this machine doesn't exist it was just painted by my students using PowerPoint or using a, a, a painting pro program in, in their laptop, right? It's a complete fake. The machine doesn't exist, but you can already describe the whole script. Yeah? It's a way, it's a scenario of the future, which makes you think, which makes the, the, the client think, which makes the barista think, or whoever you would like to make a scenario about. And this scenario was of a tourist that wanted to go to his hotel, right? Yeah? So, I just gave you this example because it shows that just by using a painting program or using PowerPoint, you can make something that, that tells a story about a future possibility. Okay?